Good morning everybody, it's Adam from Blackrock Outfitters and this is episode 5 of the Nomad Build. Okay, so we're going to finally move on to the inside of the van. Now, I'm not going to do the plastics on the outside until pretty much near the end to be honest. Uh, got a few little bits to do, we're waiting on a few bits, we're going to get a, a new set of rear lights. There's a new set of uh, trims coming for the one piece on the outside. So, I'm going to make a start on the inside. Today I'm going to be looking at doing the insulation and the wiring. Uh, a lot of people use Celotex. I tend to use Dacron or Recycle Bottle Top. Um, it's just as effective. It doesn't retain any water. Um, doesn't give off any sort of moisture or any sort of you know nasty smells or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to be using today. Um, the wiring side of things, I'm going to need to run uh, basically. The bulkhead's going to come out today um, and then that will give access to the double seat, the battery, the solar charge controller, um, the split charge and everything's going to be under that seat. So I'm going to be feeding everything off, off that area to be honest. So I'm going to be coming up, uh, I'm going to need a feed for the lights, I'm going to need a feed for the fridge, um, the pump for the tap, um, there's going to be a galley light so I'm going to need a feed for that. Um, uh, USBs at the back, so we're going to have USBs, one this side, one that side, on a spotlight which is adjustable. Um, and that's it, I, I think we'll just see how we get on, and uh, yeah, I'll set the camera up and I think I'll just do a time lapse to be honest, and uh, away we go. Right, see you in a bit. Okay, as you can see, the bulkhead just needs pulling out now 
What I wanted to show you was the absolute state of the back of the seats because that is years and years worth of people pressure washing floors, dropping uh, Coca Cola, dropping drinks. I mean, got the standard issue pencil from a carpenter, got some drill bits, got a pair of gloves. Lovely. Okay. I'm going to pull the bulkhead out, try and clear up a bit of that dirt in the back of there. Um, I'm probably going to fetch the floor out and, and just completely wash everything out, to be honest, because that's absolute, uh, well, it's just disgusting, isn't it? So I'm going to fetch everything out, get it cleaned out, and then I'll show you what we're working with after that. Right, see you in a minute. Okay, it's at this point I just wanted to show you um, underneath the floor. Now, it does look as bad as it does on the video in the flesh, and it stinks. I don't, I, honestly, I'm lost for words. I don't even know what that is. To me, it looks like uh, oil, but it smells, oh God, I just don't even know how to describe the smell. It's like gone off um, vegetables or something, I don't know, but it looks like uh, oil or tar or something. So, I just wanted to say that when you're having a conversion done, obviously you wouldn't have been, a been able to see any of that because it was covered up. We could see a bit of dirt on the sides, but you couldn't really see that. I mean, a lot of that is the matting from underneath the floor that has just, it's disintegrated. Um, and it's just, it just stinks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it down by the tap. I'm going to wash all this out. I'm going to put some 101 on it, clean it all out. Get, just get it clean, do you know what I mean? I'll, people build on top of this. There's conversion companies out there that actually don't bother taking the floors out. They give it a quick sweep and they go, oh, that'll do. Well, it won't do, will it? Because that's, I'm not saying it's as bad as that, but nine times out of 10, when you fetch your floor out, it's gonna have some sort of shit under there. So why not just take it out and clean it out? I mean, I've, I've chopped the floor up, to be honest with you. The, the bottom of the floor is absolutely rotten. So that's, you know, that that's basically what I'm looking at. Over this side, there's a load of, uh, like rubble and no doubt it's been used to go to the tip or whatever but it's just shitty in it why would you want to build on top of that when you get a lovely conversion on the top and you build on top of that so yeah if you're having a conversion done make sure the company is using a very very good clean floor where the van hasn't done much work at all then that's fair enough but if you've got a used van like this seeing a little bit of life on the inside just just fetch it out for the sake of some new board and a bit of a clean out it's well worth it you don't get any nasty smells and you get a nice uh, a nice starting base to go from well i was going to get down by the tap next little bit will probably be this cleaned out see you in a bit well i have absolutely destroyed my broom but what a result we've got a clean floor that's a cracking base to work from and I'm really, really happy with that, how that's come up. I didn't think we were going to get a result like that, to be honest. There's a few little bits to take out. That's a Velcro strip off the original floor. There's one over there as well. There's some silicon seal around the edges dotted about. But overall, it's a pretty good base to go from now. There's a little bit of rust here and there on the floor. So I'm going to put a bit of red oxide on that tomorrow when it's actually dry. It's going to drain out overnight on the drain holes at the bottom of the van. I've left it outside for about an hour so far. It is pretty much clear, to be honest. But um, yeah... There's a little bit left on the floor there which will need to be mopped up in the morning. I will go around with the rag just to make sure everything's dry before we put the insulation and the wiring in. I was going to put the insulation and the wiring in today but I'm not joking that absolutely stunk and there was no way I was going to work in there. So cracking result I'm going to let it dry out and I shall see you in the morning. Welcome back it's a fresh start this morning and today we're going to be looking at doing the reversing camera. So the customer has supplied me with this camera kit. I know Greg Virgo out there, he has done a video on a reversing camera kit. I think this is, I don't know, I think it's slightly different, you know. Okay, so what you need to do first is mount the camera. You've got some connections into that. As far as I can see, you've got a, a yellow, which is the Fono out, and the white is not used. And then you've got a red, which goes to the reverse light feed and the black goes to ground then that comes off there into the bit by the monitor 
And I think this is where the bit where Greg did uh, the wiring where he splashed into the wiring. So I'm going to have to look at that and I'll, I don't know whether the wiring is the same in a medium wheelbase uh, crafter. I don't know whether they're all sort of coloured up the same or not. So that's something I am going to have to check. But it's pretty simple. You just basically chop into the uh, chop into the wiring. So you don't use the green one. The red goes to the reverse light feed, and the yellow. Oh. Oh. Oh well, that's just amazing. Now I've got no instructions, so um, I'll just what I'll do is I'll just guess it. I don't need instructions anyway. So the monitor's down there, um, and I'll just bodge some wires in. Yeah. So no nice one. Right. See you in a sec. See, cup of tea's got a use for everything. Right, I was saying that the red goes to the light feed, the black goes to the ground or the chassis, and that connects to that to the yellow one, which I've already done. So let me show you. I've already put the camera in. Camera is in place. So inside that channel there, I've connected the connection, which goes down there, into there so what i'm going to be doing in a second is with the cluster i'm going to be looking at these these pins on this and hopefully i can pick up the reverse light feed so i'm going to go into the cab i'm going to put it in reverse i'm going to put um a voltmeter into there obviously test each one and one of them will be for the reverse then all i'm going to do is i'm just going to splice into that wiring with the red cable that come down from the camera put the put the other one to the ground and that's it that's that end done so then what i've done is i've run the other cable which you're not going to be able to see you can just see it there on top of the uh on top of the wire in there that's the other cable the black cable that goes down to the camera so i've run that down there that's gonna uh, go behind the bulkhead down the pillar and into the into the cab and then I think the other bits of wiring are going to end up going into there. They're going to be spliced into there somewhere. Because there is enough lead on the camera. There's the camera. Well, the monitor. That's the monitor that uh, I've been given. So that's going to be going on the dash. There's all the mounting of cable that connects to that. And there's the other bits of wiring there that need to be connected uh, into the wiring loom. So it's not too complex, it's just a bit time consuming really. Um, it only took me about, I don't know, an hour tops to run all the wiring and everything. Um, most of that was trying to feed it down the pillar because there is some obstacles in the way. But yeah, I'm going uh, to jump in the cab now, uh, try and find the 12 volt at the back and we'll go from there. Right, see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Right, I've done a very, very basic rigging up of the wiring at this point. So I've put the earth wire to the chassis there. That will be connected properly with a nut and a bolt and a proper washer on there. This is the back of the plug. So we've worked out that the thin blue and thick white on the connector is the reverse in live. That's going to go to obviously that red wire there. So if we go down to the front, It was actually a little bit further back than I expected, but we've gone into the pillar. So I've picked up the wiring in the pillar just to just due to how short that is from there to the camera. As you can see, I've put, uh, well, spliced into that wiring there. Again, thick white, thin blue. That's for the live. I'm gonna solder that in properly in a second. I've also put a very basic earth onto there. And then when we put it into reverse, we've got a camera. So no more backing into posts, no more smashing bollards or wheelie bins or running over cats. Happy days, I'm gonna get all this put in properly, second fix on the wiring, put it all in, and that's it, job done. Right, see you in a bit. Okay, I'm back. So as you can see, there is a USB feed in there, which comes across to there. So that's one feed. In the roof there is another feed, that is for the four spotlights. Over in that corner I've got a feed just there, that comes for the galley lights which shines down onto the worktop. That's feed three. In this conduit that comes around there I've got feed four for the tap and feed five for the fridge. That is it. Keep it simple, okay? 
the amount of people who make wiring complicated, it's just, it's out of hand. There's that many YouTube videos of people who know what they're doing, people who think they know what they're doing, and people who just make it too complicated to even understand. This van is built for people, right, who have got like, limited knowledge. They may be clued up, but limited knowledge people can jump in the van. If they get an issue, they know where to go, they know what to look for, and know what to do to make it right. Very simple, okay? We're not in uh, 1992, so we don't use Zig units out of a caravan. Why people still use those, I'll never know. Um, they're complicated, they've got parts in them that can go wrong. We've got these wonderful things now called uh, switch panels, which fit in there perfectly. It's a panel, it's got five switches on it, which do each one of those things I've just showed you. Switches, a couple of USBs, and a voltmeter, that's it. Keep it simple. Now, a lot of you are going to be really, really disappointed in here because this is not a Victron showroom, okay? Let me show you the solar setup. Oh God, there's no Victron in here. Oh God. Some of these vans on Instagram that I see, right, they are blatantly sponsored by Victron because they have two Victron batteries, they've got a Victron controller, they've got a Victron split charge, they've got a Victron power bank, a Victron inverter, a Victron driver's seat, a Victron mirror, a Victron dashboard. Hey, we're sponsored by Victron. My God. Do people get sponsored or what, right? We're in the UK. We don't get sponsored by Victron. Well, it's very rare that we do. Um, however, Victron is a brilliant product. I'm not knocking it for what it can do and the quality of it. But to be honest, it's just not needed in this van. If you wanted to power the van um, for more than two people uh, and live in the van, then yeah, Victron's great. But for what I'm trying to do in this van, right, this is aimed at two people going away for a week or two at a time. Very simple to use. You can jump in it. If something goes wrong, you can get to all the wiring. You can understand where everything goes and what it does. And that's all you need to do, okay? This is more than capable of powering the fridge, the spotlights, and the USBs. Not a problem. So let me just run this through. Um, on the roof, there is a 120-watt solar panel. You don't need anything bigger than that for this battery. That comes down under the seat and goes into the controller, which is over there. It comes out of the controller and goes to the leisure battery. That's brilliant, okay, but in the UK we get a lot of cloud, we get really, really shitty weather, and to be honest, <laughs> you really struggle to charge your battery if you haven't got a bit of sun. So, this is where this comes in. That's a split charge controller. Let me explain that how that works to you. So if you imagine over here, under the floor, you've got your main battery of the van. That powers the whole van. Off that, we take a feed. That comes into this controller. Out of the controller, it goes round and it goes to the leisure battery. This is a brilliant backup if you've got cloudy days or your solar panel gets damaged or that breaks or anything in the wiring goes wrong. What this does is it senses the voltage in your leisure battery. If your leisure battery drops below a certain voltage, this opens up and sends voltage to your battery so it charges it while you're driving. Okay? It's really, really simple. It's really easy to use and it can't really go wrong. Unless that breaks or that breaks, you've got power. If this goes wrong, you've got that. And if that goes wrong, you've got this. If they both go wrong, you need to get the RAC to bring you back to the UK. Okay? <laughs> right, I'm only joking with you, but it's really simple. You can see how easy it is to use. If you're out, something goes wrong, the back of the panel's there. Each one of these is fused, okay? You run a live into the panel um, and an earth into the panel, and that's it. If anything goes wrong on the switches, it's all fused, so you just pop the fuse open, put a new fuse in, away you go. If anything does go wrong with the wiring, which, God forbid, it won't, um, then it's the wiring. Then all you do is trace it back, so you'd pop one of the lights out, you could do a continuity test to the lights. Everything is accessible. The beauty is as well, if you wanted to put an inverter in there, you can, because there's still plenty of space. The only thing that's going to be in here is the back of that unit. I do put a plate on there with the earth bar on it, and that's it. So that's all still uh, usable space. This is going to have a, a swivel seat on it as well, so the seat will be slightly higher. So yeah, easy, simple to use, and easy to maintain if anything goes wrong. Right. I just wanted to show you what the weather conditions were like outside. As you can see, it's quite cloudy. Now, I've got everything wired up. And you can see that we're currently charging um, 
it's, well it keeps varying from 0.6 amps to 0.7 amps um, and the output current is 0.5 so the output current as you can see I've got two things plugged in I'm currently charging my phone and I'm also charging uh, the work light which just decided to die on me so I thought what a great time to test it out so as you can see the red lights on there that's actually charging and those are the figures so it's sort of evening itself out at the moment um, you can turn the charge on and off with that so obviously now we've got 0.6 amps going straight in and there you can see it's just varying now between 12.9 and it will go to 13 very shortly which I don't think that's too bad considering it's quite cloudy um, so yeah better turn that back on and there we go as you can see when it comes back on it's just uh, completely evening itself out there I'm really happy with that right I will just show you this inside here there's the back of the switch panel that's been put in I do run uh, a separate switch which is there just to power the uh, the panel it doesn't come with a switch unfortunately so you have to add that yourself but all the wiring's there it goes underneath there's the little earthing block there and the earthing block is actually earthed over there on the seat as I said nice and simple effective and you can also get to it if you need to replace anything or do any inspections or anything like that I don't think my lead well I'll just unplug it so I can show you this side there's the panel so you've got a separate switch there for the panel that will come on and that will give you your voltage there's two USBs there and all of these are powered now spot on right onto the insulation Et voila, le cochon. I don't know what that means, but it's probably French for insulation. So then, what do you think to that? I'm not just saying it, but putting that in has made a big difference inside the van. I know the windows are cut out, right? I know you're going to say, oh, you know, there's a draft coming through anyway, but just the general feel of it in there is rather warm. Um, I know when the windows go in and the rest of the uh, the appliances and everything it's, it's just going to pack it out nicely and um, 
that's going to be a really nice place to be. Obviously, I've still got to put a little bit in the back doors. Um, you've got the two little pieces there, and obviously a piece at the top. But I just wanted to show you what it was like in the van now. I mean, you can hear the difference. And I mean, you might not be able to hear it on there, but the actual difference in the can you can you hear it? It's quite a dull. It's quite a dull sound. Whereas when you go out there, obviously it's a bit bit echoey out there. This mm. this sound in here is nice and dull, so it's going to do the job. So what I'm going to do next is uh, I am going to put the vapor barrier on. Now I don't vapor barrier the roof because it becomes really problematic trying to keep uh, the vapor barrier on in one piece and actually screw um, the laminate floor in. So I don't do the do the roof, but I will do the sides. I know it's not much uh, to vapor barrier, but it all helps. It's better than just having sort of bare insulation there. Um, it does make a difference, um, as I say, from sort of moisture and that getting to the back of the panel. And uh, any any little holes like that, I will tape over with the aluminium tape. There's going to be uh, curtains that are going to be going across there, uh, but there's going to be a board on there which will come up so high anyway. So you're not really going to see um, probably down to about there, all the way around. So you won't really see any of that anyway. But all these holes here, they're all going to be taped up. I have seen people putting insulation in there. You can if you want. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it's really not going to make much difference, to be honest. If it was a completely um, solid van without the windows being cut in, then maybe. Uh, but this all gets covered anyway. If, if it's a solid van, you, you'd um, insulate all that anyway. So it's, it's one of them. It's, it's not really going to make much difference in the grand scheme of things. So I don't tend to do those. Um, any big holes like that, I'm probably going to make some boards that, that are going to cover that up. You can pack insulation in there if you want. But I've tried to do that in the past and they get wet. So um, it's not the best idea because... You've got your uh, reversing camera or your brake light up there. And if they leak, it comes into there, it goes down inside your van, and all your lovely insulation in there gets soaked. It gets absolutely drenched, and it will rot the inside of the van. So I'm not really a fan of, you know, putting all the insulation in these tiny little pieces. Um, yeah, aluminium tape over the holes, vapor barrier over the top of the insulation, and then after that, I'm going to be putting some battens on the uh, ribs of the van there. Uh, the batten is roughly 25mm, so that will come down to there roughly. And it will just sit nicely there, so it's going to pack it out to about there. And it's going to sit nicely with the insulation. All I will say on insulation is just, just use your brain. Don't go too thick on it. You can use Celotex if you want, but don't go too thick on that log. Don't be putting 50mm Celotex in because it's too thick. You can just about get away with 25mm and that's it. I've tried Celotex and I've tried Dacron. I've tried the recycled bottle top and there is no difference in between the three. You can say what you want about that. Everybody's got an opinion on insulation. Every, there's hundreds of videos on YouTube. And the other thing is, just enjoy yourself. Do you know what I mean? Just enjoy it. Don't don't spend days and days researching insulation. All you need to know is do not put anything like loft insulation in these vans. Um, it's not very good for the van. It sweats like mad. Uh, eventually, it will rot the inside of the van out. Um, and it makes a right mess and also stinks. So, And that's just what it does on its own. Um, it, it just can't breathe and it just sweats. I don't know why it does it. Um, it's obviously the heat on the inside of the van uh, reacting with the cold on the outside and it just sweats like mad. I think I'm going to conclude the video there today everybody. Um, we're up to nearly about half an hour now so it's been a bit of a, a longer one than usual but obviously I'm about to pack in quite a lot into this episode. Uh, the van's looking really good. Um, the next bit is going to be the vapour barrier going on. Now I'm not going to film that. It is quite a laborious task and to be honest, it is quite boring to watch. It's you know it's not really uh, very in depth at all. Um, I will put the uh, the vapor barrier on the end of this video, um, but don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. It all helps us get to the top of the rankings on YouTube, and and more people can see the video and and the progress on this build. Right, I'm going to get the vapor barrier on. Um, I'll add it on to the end of this, and uh, as always, I'll see you in a sec. 
just had a call from my supplier and the plants are on their way the hydroponic lights are uh, en route as well so by the end of the day we should be able to plant the uh, plant the seeds and away we go <laughs> oh god it looks like a grow room doesn't it christ okay so that's the vapor barrier in i'm not going to spend too long on this because this is the end of the video but that just gives you a bit of an insult into what you should be looking like by the time you put your vapor barrier on the rest of the metal is going to be covered in carpet lining and fabric so that's not going to be an issue on this one so yeah there you go right the next sort of uh, area i'm going to be tackling is the floor which is going to be coming in part six so as you can see there's a lot of uh, rust patches on there i'm going to hit that with the red oxide just to give it a bit of protection and then i'm going to cut the template for the floor which is right there that's going to be cut out put in screwed down and ready for the uh, the penny flooring the rubber penny flooring Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.